Hello, today we're going to go over division strategies when solving a division problem that has a two-digit divisor. We are going to focus on the standard algorithm and partial quotients. In this first problem here, we have 5,709 divided by 11. In this problem here, we are going to use the standard algorithm. So I'm going to first take a look at my divisor, which is 11. It is a two-digit number. So we're going to take a look now at the first two digits here. 11 times some number gets me very close or exactly to 57. So 11 times 5 is 55. And that gets me close to or exactly to 57. Now I'm going to subtract here, and I'm left with 2. But notice I still have more digits here. Now I'm going to bring down my 0, and I have 11 times some number gets me close to exact or exactly to 20. So 11 times 1 is 11. I'm going to subtract. Don't forget, you might need to borrow within these problems. And now I'm left with 9. Now I still have another digit. I'm going to bring down the 9. 11 times some number gets me close to or exactly to 99. 11 times 9, in fact, is 99. I'm going to subtract, and I'm left with 0, so I have no remainder, nothing left over. So the quotient happens to be 519. Now notice this is the same steps you would have done for the standard algorithm if you had a one-digit divisor, except in this problem you have a two-digit divisor, but it's still the same process. Now in this next problem here, we have 19,337 divided by 61. Now having a divisor of 61 may become difficult when using the standard algorithm. So in this problem, I want to show you how to do partial quotients. Now the first thing I do before I even start any division is take a look at my divisor, which is 61. On the side, on the scrap paper, what I like to do is write down some facts to help me solve this problem. Problem. So I know that 61 times 1 is 61. 61 times 10 is 610. 61 times 100 is 6,100. So I like to do with my powers of one, powers of 10 here, and I also do the same thing here when I have twos. 61 times 2 is 122. 61 times 20 is 1,220. 61 times 200 is 12,200. Now hopefully you guys are recognizing these patterns here as we've previously learned and now we're applying this when we're using when we're solving this division problem. Now we have 61 times 5 is 305. 61 times 50 is 3,050. 61 times 500 is 30,500. Now I like to write this out on the side of my paper before I start my division problem. This way when I'm doing the division, I don't have to continuously write down multiplication facts and guess and check on the side of my paper. Instead, I already have this written down ready for me to use when I start my division. So now I'm going to decide 61 times something gets me very, very close to 19,337. Now I also drew a line on this side, and that's going to help separate and help me figure out what my quotient is. So now looking at all these numbers here that I have, I want to try to figure out which is the closest to 19,337. Now, I, from what I have here is I have 12,200 looks to be the closest. Now, if you chose to maybe do 61 times 400 or 61 times 300, maybe got you a little bit closer to 19,337, that's absolutely fine. What's really great about partial quotients is everyone can kind of select different numbers throughout this problem, and you're going to find that you always get the same answer if you did it correctly. So now I'm going to use 61 times 200 equals 12,200. I'm going to place 200 here on the side. And what I'm going to do is now decide, okay, now I'm going to put 12,200 right underneath here. And I'm going to subtract to see what is left. Now I'm going to do my subtraction. And I noticed 
that I'm left with 7,137. So I'm going to go back to over here and determine what number is closest to 7,137. Looking at all the numbers I have here, I notice 61 times 100 equals 6,100. So again, I want to put 100 on my side here. And now I'm going to take 6,100. And I'm going to subtract now <clears throat> to see what's left over. And when I subtract, I'm left with 1,037. So I'm getting pretty close. So now I'm going to take another look here and see what gets me close to this number. I notice here that I have 61 times 10. So I'm going to place 10 here. And now I'm going to subtract 610. And now I'm going to do my subtraction here. And it's OK if you have to borrow here. That's absolutely fine. And I'm left with 427. So notice I'm getting pretty close. But let's see if something can get me even closer. So now I see that 61 times 5 is 305. So I'm going to include 5 right here. So now I have 305. I'm going to subtract. And I'm left with 122. So now I'm really close to finishing, but I want to see, is there anything else that could get me close to that? Now here I notice that 61 times 2 happens to be 122. That's awesome. So now I'm going to place 2 here, and I'm going to subtract. And since I notice I have that exact number here, I have no remainder again. So now I have no remainder here. Now my next task here is to find my quotient. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add everything together on my side here. So I have 200, and I'll just rewrite this so you can see this a little bit more clear, plus 100, plus 10, plus 5, plus 2. So now when I add this together, I happen to get, I notice all my 1s are lined up, my 10s, and my hundreds, I happen to get 317 as my final answer. And 317 happens to be the quotient in this problem. So notice here, this is all you need to do. Now, my recommendation for you is to write this on the side of your paper because it was much easier that I already had this listed before I even started the problem. So now let's take a look at this word problem we have here. An airline has 848 pieces of luggage to put away. If each luggage compartment will hold 28 pieces of luggage, how many will be in the compartment that isn't full? So if they're asking us how many will be in the compartment that isn't full, that means we're going to be looking for a remainder as our answer. But before we even find the remainder or use that as our answer, we need to find it. And you do that by doing the division. So for this problem, I'm going to switch back to the standard algorithm. And for today's problems, you can choose either method that works for you. So now I have 848 divided by 28 to get those equal pieces. So now notice here, I have to decide 28 times something gets me really close to 84. So now on the side, let's see, let's try 28 times three. Let's see what happens. So 28 times three happens to be, we have three times eight is 24, three times two is six plus two is eight, happens to be exactly 84. So now if I know 28 times three is 84, I'm going to subtract, I'm left with zero, but now I'm gonna bring down my eight, and 28 times nothing gets me closer exactly to eight, and now I have my remainder of eight. So my remainder here happens to be eight, my quotient is 30, my remainder is eight. So this is telling me that 
there if it's asking if each luggage compartment will hold 28 pieces of luggage. So that means they have 30 luggage compartments that will hold exactly 28 pieces of luggage. But you still have those other eight pieces of luggage. So how many will be in the compartment that isn't full? So even though they have 30 compartments that hold exactly 28 pieces of luggage, there's going to be that 31st compartment, but that's not going to be full. And there's going to be those eight pieces of luggage that is in that compartment that is not full. So the answer to this question happens to be eight pieces of luggage. So eight pieces of luggage, eight luggage um, is what is going to be going into that last compartment that is not full. Now your answer to this problem today would just be eight. Notice they never asked for 30 remainder eight. The only answer to this problem is just eight pieces of luggage. Now in this problem here, it says a pizza store had 569 pieces of pepperoni to put on their pizzas. If each pizza got 31 pieces, how many extra pieces of pepperoni will they have? So extra pieces. Well, it sounds like they wanna figure out what's left over and that's known as my remainder, but I need to find my remainder so I do need to set up my long division problem. So here, we're gonna switch back and we're gonna do partial quotients. Now notice, just like the previous problem, I already wrote out 31 times one is 31. 31 times 10 is 310. I did the same thing, 31 times two, 31 times five. I like to do my ones, twos, and fives. I think that makes it nice and simple when I'm multiplying. Many times I can do that in my head as well, which makes it much easier when I'm writing it out on my scrap paper. So now I'm going to take a look at this. I'm going to draw my line. 31 times something gets me really close to 569. So looking here, I happen to see that 31 times 10 gets me pretty close. Now, some of you might have done other facts and maybe gotten closer, and that's fine. But I'm just going to keep it nice and simple with things I already have written down. Now I'm going to subtract, and I'm left with 259. So now I'm going to take another look and determine, well, what gets me close to 259? I see 31 times 5 happens to be uh, 155. So I'm going to write 5 here, 155. And now I'm going to subtract. I'm left with 4. 0 and 1, 104. So now my next task, I'm going to decide, let's see, what gets me close to exactly 104? I see 31 times 2 is 62. So let's subtract. And I have 2. Don't forget, you might need to borrow, which is completely fine. And 42. Now my last bit, I have 31 times 1 gets me really close to 42. So 31 when I subtract. And I'm left with 11 here as my remainder. Now I know I'm finished here because 11 is less than my divisor of 31. If you ever feel like you might be done, you should check to see if whatever's left over is smaller than your divisor. If it is larger than your divisor, you can continue to divide. So now I'm gonna add these together, 10 plus five plus two plus one. So I have 10 plus five is 15, plus two is 17, plus one is 18. So 18 is my quotient and my remainder is 11. But the problem is asking how many extra pieces of pepperoni would they have? So again, a pizza store had 569 pieces of pepperoni to put on their pizzas. If each pizza got 31 pieces, how many extra pieces of pepperoni would they have? That's known as your remainder. So all you're going to do here for your answer would be 11 extra pieces of pepperoni. And 11 pieces of pepperoni would be your answer. You're only looking for the remainder as your answer. Now, in these problems today, I recommend you find what strategy works best for you. Do you like partial quotients? Do you like the standard algorithm? Either method is perfectly fine, but you decide what works best for you. When you have word problems, make sure you're reading them very carefully to see if they're asking for the quotient 
or the remainder, or maybe both. Really make sure you read, identify the question, and identify exactly what they're asking for. So as always, this video is posted on my YouTube channel. I highly recommend you refer back to it at any time when you are deciding and learning more about partial quotients and the standard algorithm when dividing numbers with a double-digit divisor.